Welcome to the Annual Compliance Certification Module. This module is presented by the Division of Compliance Assistance Environmental Compliance Assistance Program. The Division of Compliance Assistance is part of the Kentucky Department for Environmental Protection. DCA exists to provide services that increase environmental knowledge and encourage positive behavioral changes. DCA does this to improve regulatory compliance, achieve exceptional performance, and to enhance the quality of Kentucky's environment and communities. The ACC, or Annual Compliance Certifications, is a duty imposed upon all holders of Kentucky Air Quality Permits, issued after the Clean Air Act amendments in 1990. I'm sure your first question is why a permit holder is required to submit the ACC. It is a direct requirement of the Clean Air Act and is codified in the Kentucky Administrative Regulations. The intent of the reporting requirements is for facilities to investigate their air emission sources, confirm proper monitoring and record keeping, and ensure the authorities with their compliance to air quality regulations and the conditions of their permit. In addition, the ACC requires sworn certification signed by a responsible official to provide greater assurance and responsibility of the facility's compliance with air quality regulations. 401 KR 521 section 162 provides the definition of a responsible official, which I'll not read through, but basically outlines who at your facility or company should sign the ACC. This is a certification statement to which the responsible official signs, and basically states that the information is true, accurate, and complete under penalty of law. False statements are punishable by fines or imprisonment. The ACC is due annually, as the name suggests, but the ACC must be postmarked by January 30th, which will report on January 1st through December 31st of the preceding year. Failure to submit in a timely manner is a violation. In special cases, there are facilities that have two permits or two locations, or a recently revised permit. You should submit an ACC for each permit that has been issued. Be sure to specify the appropriate date ranges. If you were issued your permit in the last year, then you will need to certify compliance beginning with the issuance date of that permit. If the facility was recently issued a permit and is not yet operating, you still need to submit the ACC, but make a statement regarding the construction or operational status. If you are operating some emission units and not others, be sure to indicate the units that are not operating or date ranges in which they were not operating. Now that the introduction is through, let's start with the ACC submission. The ACC is to be submitted on the form DEP7007CC, which is provided by the Kentucky Department for Air Quality. You can access the form by going to air.ky.gov. This is the Kentucky Division for Air Quality homepage. If you scroll down, view their quick links and select applications and forms. Then you will select Division, Air Quality, Program, Permitting, and scrolling down, you will find the DEP 7007 CC form. In addition, right above is a link to the revised instructions to complete this form. If you select the hyperlink, it will bring up the Excel document. The Excel document will look like this. This is the DEP 7007 CC form. Minor modifications to the form are allowable, but significant changes must be pre-approved by your regional office. One modification that nearly everyone will have to make will be the addition or duplication of pages in order to accommodate the number of applicable permit conditions or requirements for the facility. This is page one of the CC form. Notice it is not called Annual Compliance Certification Form. That is because the form has more than one purpose. Some of the information requested is self-explanatory and can be pulled directly off the cover page of your permit, such as your source name and source street address. This will be the physical address of your facility. For number five, the source ID number, please enter the agency interest number. 
Here's an example cover page of a permit. Your agency interest number will be listed here. For number six, permit numbers, you will want to enter your permit ID number and also the source ID number, which is the 10 digit number that begins with 21. Number seven, submittal information. This question, is this the first submittal of the form? Yes or no? The answer is generally yes for the ACCs. This question is not as important for the annual certifications. What is the reporting period? Usually it will be from January 1st to December 31st of the preceding year, unless you have a special case of a new permit or permit revisions, etc. that we discussed earlier, in which case you will want to adjust your reporting period. There are three sections in which you will put compliance information. One is for units in compliance, one for those units subject to future compliance dates, and one, which is actually two pages, for units that are not in compliance. We will begin with section 8A1 for units in compliance. This is section 8A1 for units in compliance. The first two columns are for identifying emission point and emission unit ID numbers. Emission point and emission unit can be interchangeable, but you will want to use the numbering system set forth by your particular permit. For example, on this permit, we will start with emission unit one. It will be emission points one through six. The next column is for the permit condition or applicable regulation. Here, you may list one or the other. For this first emission unit, the applicable regulations are listed here. If you list the permit condition, our first permit condition will be section B, 2A, and the applicable regulation is listed here. The emission unit description for this emission unit is spray coating operation. The permit limit may be a pollutant limit or an operating limit, such as 20% opacity or less than 10,000 tons per year of coal burned on a rolling 12 month total basis. You may have several permit limits for a single emission point or emission unit. Again, you will need to make several rows to incorporate all permit limits. The first permit limit for section B, 2A, is an emission limitation for particulate matter of 2.34 pounds per hour. The method used for determining compliance is listed here, our compliance demonstration method. The source is considered to be in compliance when the filters are in place and properly maintained. For information on your compliance demonstration method, this refers to subsection 4 monitoring requirements. So if we scroll down for these monitoring requirements, for the filters, the permittee shall install, calibrate, maintain, and operate according to the manufacturer specifications and manometers to determine the pressure drop across the filter once daily during operation of the unit. For this method, we can simply enter to determine compliance, the filters are in place and properly maintained. The properly maintained will be according to the monitoring requirements set forth in the permit. In addition, you will need to note whether the method and compliance are continuous or intermittent. Defining the method as continuous or intermittent Continuous method is a method in which data is collected in a continuous manner as typically defined in the regulations as data that is collected and analyzed or recorded at least once every 15 minutes. If there's gaps in the data, the method cannot be considered continuous. Intermittent methods are all methods that are not continuous. Unless there is an automatic continuous emission monitor, it is likely that most methods will be intermittent. One very common intermittent method is the weekly visible emission observations. Defining continuous versus intermittent for compliance. A continuous compliance 
is that based on all data available, whether monitoring data, record keeping data, etc., a source can claim continuous compliance when there's no evidence or reason to believe that they were not in compliance. The source can claim continuous compliance even when the data is intermittent due to an intermittent method of determining compliance. Intermittent means that there is a evidence or reason to believe that the source was not in compliance at all times for the given term or condition. Failure to meet any permit term or condition is considered intermittent compliance and should be listed in section 8B1 and 8B2 to reflect being out of compliance. For this permit condition, our method is intermittent since it is collected, analyzed, or recorded greater than 15 minute intervals. The compliance is continuous. You will continue to fill out a single row for each permit condition or permit limit. Our next permit condition for emission unit one, emission points one through six, for permit condition B, two, B, is an opacity of the visual emissions from each stack of 20%. The compliance demonstration method, we will see section four for monitoring requirements for opacity compliance demonstration method, which are visual observations, no less than weekly and maintaining a log. Again, we will list the emission point one through six, emission unit one, the permit condition or applicable regulation one or the other is fine. The emission unit description, our permit limit of less than 20% opacity, the method for determining compliance as weekly visual observations. The method again is intermittent and our compliance was continuous. For our permit condition, B to C, we will refer to section D for the source-wide VOC and HAP emission limitations. So if we scroll down to section D, we have section D, our VOC and HAP emissions, VOC no greater than 90 tons during any consecutive 12 month period. Compliance demonstration method is going to be our 12 month rolling totals. You will want to continue through your permit through each emission point and emission unit, filling out each column as applicable. There are several compliance methods or permit limits that can range from qualitative to quantitative. They may be a rolling total or calculation a log or record keeping requirement, or possibly an operating requirement. Be sure to list all of these and describe them in each column and row. An actual emissions column does not have to be a value, but rather can be a statement. Also, when you report a numeric value, be sure to include the unit of measure. Use common terms in descriptions or those terms defined within the permit. Avoid using any jargon or acronyms. DAQ inspectors are going to be reading several of these reports from a variety of sources. Make sure your report is clear and concise as possible. Put all of the elements into a logical and easy to understand report. The next section, 8A2, is for units subject to future compliance dates. Many facilities will not have anything to put on 8A2 but these are units that have new or upcoming rules that apply or testing or compliance dates that occur in the future. For example, last year, many facilities put the requirements for the boiler rule in this section. Here's an example from last year for the boilers. The permittee shall demonstrate compliance by and the date. Or if your facility is not subject to a future compliance date, just make a simple statement to that effect. The next section, which is actually two pages, 8B1 and 2, for units that are not in compliance. 8B1, emission units not in compliance, is identical to 8A1. 
except for these are units not in compliance. If at any point the emission unit was not in compliance, even if it was just once out of compliance, or if the records were not taken, then you list it under the units not in compliance. Name your exceedance in the actual emissions column. For example, if records were not taken, you can write visual emissions not recorded, or you can write the value that the maximum recorded visual emissions was. For example, if you have a 20% opacity limit and you recorded a 35% opacity, you can simply enter 35%. On page two, for the units not in compliance, 8B2, you will carry over your emission point and emission unit ID and enter your reason for not compliance, whether it was not recorded or there was a malfunction. It's also good to put the date or dates in which the error occurred, how and why the error occurred, and how it was corrected or how the error may be prevented in the future. Here's an example, failed to log and the reason, or in compliance except for 10 occasions, the reason being an operator oversight and material quality. This is the manner in which the not in compliance units are to be completed. Make sure you fill out both sections. Lastly, once the report is completed, the responsible official has to sign or certify the report. Some of the major points to remember is to report all elements in a clear, logical, and easy to understand manner. When you're reporting any numeric values, be sure to include the unit of measure. Use common terms that are defined within your permit. The ACC is to be turned in to your regional office only, unless you're a major source that has to submit to EPA in Atlanta. Be sure to include both the good and bad on your reports, the operations that are in compliance and out of compliance. Out of compliance activities are to include notices of violation that the facility has received, malfunctions, emissions exceedances, gaps in record keeping, deviations from the operations, etc. Also remember, be sure to have your postmark date for the ACC as January 30th, with a reporting period of January 1st through December 31st of the preceding year. There is more than one option than sending the reports through the Postal Service or by paper. Check with your regional office regarding the availability of electronic submissions. Permission can be given to email the reports to the regional office inspector or supervisor. Please note that the file size is limited to 5 megabytes. If you have a large file, you can submit an electronic version on a CD mailed to the regional office. Many common file formats are accepted, which include Word, Excel, TIFF, and PDF. Remember, all formats in which the reports are submitted must contain the required certification signature. Many facilities have been asking about possible online submittals. This option is not yet available, but may be in the near future. The Web-Based Emissions Inventory Survey is a separate system and cannot be used for the ACC submissions at this time. For further information, Kentucky DAQ has an entire page devoted to the ACC and semi-annual reports. On this page, DAQ provides links to the DEP 7007CC form for the ACC and also has frequently asked question documents on each report in addition to other valuable information. If you have specific questions regarding your requirements and reporting, please contact your regional office inspector. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Division of Compliance Assistance at 800-926-8111, email us at envhelp at ky.gov, or visit us online at dca.ky.gov. Thank you for joining us, and this concludes the Annual Compliance Certification Module.